Kia ora koutou, nau mai, hoki mai, ki te kōnei ipurangi a Nuku. Welcome back to the Nuku podcast. E ngari, this year, uh, we have a different kaupapa for Nuku. Well, different but the same. Uh, he rereke, he orite. Different but the same. <laughs> uh, the podcast this year is called Tōkureo. It's a podcast series where we will have 10 episodes talking about the real reclamation journey of Wahine Taketake, our indigenous woman. Tōkureo is derived from the whakatauki Tōkureo Toku Ohoho, ko Tōkureo Toku Māpehi Mauria, Tōkureo Toku Whakakai Marihi. So if you are familiar with that whakatauki, it talks about our language um, being a, a treasure and, um, you know, something that we love and adore um, and it's a treasure to us. And so Tōkureo, the name of this uh, podcast series, is a reflection of reclaiming these treasures of ours um, and I guess being awoken, all the other, all the other meanings that come with that whakatauki. Um, the podcast series is going to feature a number of wahine. I can't say how many because we'll see what happens as we go throughout the year. Um, but there will definitely be 10 episodes following the journeys of wahine taketake. Most of our corridor will be about te reo Māori because this year I am studying te reo Māori, rūmaki reo, uh, ki te kura takiura. So uh, I am studying total immersion te reo Māori at te wānanga takiura. And uh, a number of the people that we'll have on this po podcast are my classmates and my friends. Um, so I hope you enjoy. I hope it helps you in your journey this year and supports you. Uh, today we have two incredible wahine, both of whom I am privileged to call my friends. Um, one is Camille Harris, who is a beautiful midwife uh, and you may know her f you may know her from the television series My Māori Midwife <laughs> Te Nā Koe <laughs> and of course we have our nuku, one of our nuku wahine who is also uh, the beauty the ringa ringa uh, behind Curio Noir, ko Tiffany Witi Hira Tene, Tena Kwe. Tena Kwe Kiani. <laughs> Thank you both for joining us on our first ever episode of Tokurio. What I would love for us to do is to open our first episode with a karakia. So, he inoe tato. Tu tawa mai runga, tu tawa mai raro. Tu tawa mai i roto, tu tawa mai i waho. Kia tau wai te mauri tū, te mauri ora, ki te katoa. Hau mi e hui e tai ki e. So tōku reo, uh, this being our, I feel like I've started right at the very beginning of podcasting again. Um, but this episode is all about uh, the language reclamation journeys of wahine. And... When I talk about language reclamation, it's not just te reo Māori. There are wahine reclaiming languages all over te ao, te ao katoa. I know that um, last year we had a message from an incredible wahine who listened to Nuku and it inspired her to reclaim her vangahau niue, so Niuean language. And when we, um, well, when I started Takiura this year and thinking about what I was going to do this year. I couldn't quite let Nuku go completely for the year. Um, and so I thought about what was really encouraging for me and what was something that I was really interested in. And it was learning the stories behind wahine who are reclaiming their language. And when I looked at those who I was studying with this year, I recognised a bit of a a trend, I suppose, in that my hoa, my friends, are wahine who are, um, or who have had incredible careers already and are still having incredible careers but have had quite success in their careers, are wahine who have uh, lived and have lots of experience in their life, um, wahine many of whom are mama. And who have decided at this particular point in their life to return to Kura to learn te reo Māori. 
And so um, I wanted to really speak to you and our abahua about the realities of learning te reo Māori at this point in our lives, the realities of learning te reo Māori, uh, whether it be kura pō, rumaki reo, you know, whatever it might be, and also just uh, to be able to kōrero as wahine about this reclamation of language and what it means to us mm. and why it's important and why it's important right now for each of us as individuals. So uh, I wanted to start, and, and I know Camille's been looking at me like, is this podcast going to be in Te Reo Māori or English? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be in Te Reo Pākehā, engari. <laughs> Hopefully by the 10th episode, the whole podcast is in Te Reo Māori. How flash will we be? Um, <laughs> it may not be fun. don't get your hopes up. But, <laughs> but I wanted to start with um, each of you sharing with us who you are. Um, and why, why you have decided to take this year to reclaim your language or to grow your real. And we'll start with um, you, Tiffany, because you have uh, allowed us to come into your whare. Because <laughs> we've been, uh, we set up at Kura, we set up at Kura and it didn't quite work and then we drove out down the road and <laughs> so... Let's start with you, Ehoa, because also people will be um, familiar with you. You're already one of our nuku wahine. Um, but can you please share with us? Ko wai koe, hiaha ai tō hairinga i tēnei tau. Mm. Uh, ko mongero, ko hikurangi, te tai tokiro, ngā maunga, ko te hui hui, ko tawapuku, ngā awa, ko ngā toki matawharua te waka, Ko Paura Witihira, ko Pihiriri ngā rangatira, ko Te Huihui, ko Te Huruhi ngā marae, ko Ngai Tawake o Te Wauku, ko Ngāti Mahia ngā hapu, ko Ngāpuhi Te Iwi. Um, ko Tiffany, ahau. Kia ora Kiani, kia ora Camille. Kia ora. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so... I'm, I'm ready to start um, focusing on focusing wholeheartedly on reclaiming te reo for my whole whānau. Um, that's what this year is about. I have actually done some other courses, but um, being fully immersed, um, like how some of us maybe used to be immersed at some point in our lives or even how our ancestors have been, this is what I actually really felt like I needed. Um, at this time of my life. I probably actually always needed it, but um, I actually have. But, <laughs> but I actually mean to say that we've, I've made it a priority because it's, it's not, um, it hasn't been an easy decision mm. to stop mahi for a year <clears throat> and um, have and delegate. <laughs> Aye. Aye. So that's just the start of it, but we'll carry on. Thank you for having me. Uh, ko mamari toku waka, ko ruanui te tangata, ko tawhitira hi toku maunga, ko awapoka toku awa, ko pāringaringa toku moana, ko rongo patu taonga tōku wharekai, ko waimirirangi tōku whare tipuna, ko pōtahi tōku marae, ko te aupauri tōku iwi, ko tōko te aroa tōku urupa, uh, ko te kao tōku tūranga waiwai, uh, ko Camille Aroha Harris ahau. Um, I am a child of Whangai. I was raised in the richness of my nan and my koro. Uh, when I was young growing up, my nan used to speak a lot. It was always like, you know, past homai te pata, homai te tote, close the door, whatever it was. It was always that sort of thing. When I was 10, uh, my koro passed away and my life changed and... Um, and then I was with my mum. So that connection to all those 
cultural, you know, all my cultural side that grounded me as Māori was was a little bit disconnected for a while. Um, so I guess, you know, if I fast forward, I work as a midwife, I care for whānau Māori, um, and I'm always receiving emails and phone messages and all that kind of thing in te reo Māori and unable to... Um, return that court at all, I guess. So that's a little bit of a driver for the minute. It's always been there. I've always wanted to to reclaim the deal, but I guess that's been a bit of a driver for me. And I just think I got to a point where I was just so hungry that it's like no longer is it going to be um, fitting in to everything else I, I do. I wanted to bring it to the forefront and everything else is going to fit in around it. Mm. So making it a priority. There are a number of ways that we can learn te reo Māori. There are free programs that are out there. There's Kura Pō. There is Māori Television. You can be watching that. And there are Puka Puka you can be doing. Um, I know just today Stacey Morrison uh, shared with somebody her Massey University program that's free, mm. um, that's available to people. So I guess why, why Rū Makireo? Why was that the one that you settled on this year, as opposed to the other ways that we could be studying te reo Māori? Uh, for me, I, um, I know this works. <laughs> Being fully immersed works. And it's, it's not... Like, we're not just learning te reo. We're, we're learning about tikanga. We're learning kapahaka. We're learning um, new karakia and waiata. We're immersing ourselves within our culture in a way that um, I certainly haven't been and I've been craving for. And just weekly or just the odd, um, you know, few hours a week hasn't been... It hasn't fulfilled me and my yearning for te ao Māori. Mm, mm, mm. Um, so that's why, for me, mm. Takiura has been just this wonderful gift <laughs> for us mm. to be able to partake in. Mm. In this day and age, you know, like being in, you know, I'm in my, I'm in my 40s now. Mm. And this is an opportunity, like, I am able to go to this full, mm. full time. It's crazy. Mm. Did you, Camille, have you done, like, the kura pō and the, the different kinds of te reo Māori um, learning and courses available? Have you tried that? Yeah, I've downloaded apps. I've got every book. Um, and I, I did um, a couple of nights a week last year. But I guess... For me, I feel like I'm dipping in and out of, of Te Ao Māori, so I want to just be... Um, I wanted to have the majority of my day and the majority of my year and my world just be totally in Te Ao Māori um, and not dipping in and out. Again, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, like dipping, dipping in and out. One minute I'm in Te Ao Māori and I'm fully swirling in that world of tikanga and of, you know the reo and the waiata and the karakia and all of those kind of things and then I'm dipping out into Te Pākehā where I'm being this other mm. person in this other world and, and then it just doesn't, I don't know, that dipping in and out wasn't working for me. Mm. And I've heard lots about takiura, mm. I've heard lots about umakiru. So, and I wanted to challenge myself and dive in. Mm. I think I had a bit of the same experience in that um, I've... <laughs> it's that, again, it's one of those things that Stacey talks about, you know, don't don't just do level four every year for the next mm. three years. Mm. And I had kind of got to a point where I was stuck in my real journey because I had done the kura pō and I had... I studied um, te reo Māori at university and actually I was really um, naughty because I studied it at a level that I knew I would pass. Mm. And so for me, it was, an, it was an easy pass of a paper at that point in my life. And when I look back, a bit, like when I look back at how actually that was quite arrogant of me to mm. have done that and, and thinking about it now, um, 
that I didn't really pay enough attention in class and I didn't show up to all the classes because I knew that I'd passed that year because yeah. I knew that I had enough real to get me through that particular level. And so when I went on to do the next level of kurapō, I found myself, again, not being, as you say, not being as fully immersed in te reo Māori, so not feeling like I was retaining everything because it wasn't the dominant thing in my mm. in my life or in my timetable. Mm. And then... Um, I guess anyone who knows me knows that once I get my head into something, mm. <laughs> I'm like a thousand percent in. Mm. Mm. And that's, for me, if I didn't, well, when we think of that kupue rumaki, if I didn't drown myself in te reo Māori, te ao Māori, tikanga Māori, then I would have just done what I did at uni and just been like, oh, well, I've got enough to get through this bit but not prioritise it in the same way. Why and did you do those pa- that paper? At uni? Mm. Because um, I guess a <clears throat> couple of reasons. One was I wanted to be closer to tangata Māori mm-hmm. because in my particular study um, or in my, yeah, in what I studied, um, there wasn't a lot of Māori students and so it was my way to hononga to te ao Māori, to mm. go and, you know, study te ao Māori. Except it was like on a Friday evening at 7 o'clock or something ridiculous that you did that particular class. So that was one of the reasons, was that yearning for that hononga to Māori within that real Pākehā setting. Mm. But as I said, the other reason was it was that particular level was easy enough to pass that it was like, oh, well, at least I'm going to pass one paper. You know, <laughs> that kind of, that mindset. I mean, way back then I was 18, 17, 18. <laughs> this is a long time since I was at uni. Oh. But that whakaro at that time, and I think I was still grappling with this um, sense of identity with my reo because I had come from a mainstream kura where literally the Māori students or the, the kura kaupapa Māori was, uh, was on the other side of the fence, within the same kura, but on the other side of the fence physically. And so, yeah, I don't know, there was a lot going on at that time in my life as to <laughs> who I was as a person who had a certain level of understanding of te reo, but who wasn't a fluent or confident reo Māori speaker. It was always my dream to go to uni when I was younger um, <clears throat> to study te reo, but I didn't out of fear that of disappointing my mum mm. because she really struggled with um, being Māori and... Um, yeah, she really did. And it's so funny because with all of my tamariki, I'm like, when you finish school, you're going to study te reo. <laughs> <laughs> Even though they are learning, they have been learning te reo except for our eldest. And, um, you know, I'm just like, it's okay to be Māori. It's so beautiful and so special. And they're just like, we know. <laughs> mm. But... Um, but yeah, that's why I'm just like, wow, that's so cool that at that age that you even still had that opportunity, gave yourself that opportunity. But I didn't, do en- I didn't do enough with that opportunity. And In I think hindsight, you can look back now and yeah. see that. But at the time, you don't, we don't think like that, do we? And I think those are some of the, you know, we talk about um, traumas that are associated with mm. our real. Mm. And then, so there's that intergenerational trauma. Yeah. But then there's also that trauma um, that sometimes we put on ourselves, or that we, or that we think that we've caused ourselves, yeah. and that's one of those for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that when I look back on it, as I've gotten older, I'm like, that's a barrier, or has been a barrier to me learning to deal, because I'm like, well, I had that opportunity, and I let it go. Well, mm-hmm. I didn't take it, I didn't grasp it with both hands, and so there's also that inkling in me going do you deserve to go back again? Because you didn't even do that thing when you had it that time. That's exactly how I feel. Mm. With, um, when I um, was in high school, um, 
so we didn't um, with Alfano. I had a compared to some was slightly complicated. <laughs> it was like a complicated sort of birth and arrangement. <laughs> so I spent a lot of my time with my nan and my aunties, mm -hmm. and um, my mum had me when she was still a teenager. But I was um, actually raised by her teenage sisters who were even younger than her, <laughs> like 14 and 15. And then my auntie Annette must have been 12 or 13. And my nana used to work lots of different jobs. We used to actually go with her and she used to clean Waikato University. And we used to go there and clean and we we're always, um, that's why Dettol is actually a really comforting wow. scent to oh. me, which is really bizarre because it's just so poignant in my mind. And I remember my nana even saying, she'd be like, you know, people learn te reo here, people learn te reo here, but then there's some of us that actually hadn't have we can't do that so we do this for them so they can learn their te reo for us mm, wow you know what i mean and so i was always like oh yes you know we're like contributing to our to our community still mm. Mm. um and then um as my mum my mum was living in tamaki and then i came to live with her um and you know we just lived in tamaki was a really a very um, strenuous sort of city. Um, when I got to high school, I remember being so excited that I could have the opportunity to learn te reo again because we did have a lot of te reo growing up around us, but um, moving to Tamaki, it was completely mm. stripped from me because, and stripped from my mum as well because she obviously felt like she wasn't allowed to be who she was born to be. Mm. And so we couldn't court it or Māori at all. Mm. Um, but I remember her saying to me, do you really want to learn te reo? Like, do you really, you know, like, if you want to travel, maybe um, French, French would be... And I was like, oh, I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I think I'd really love to learn te reo. And she was like, I just don't think it's going to... Like, what is it going to do for you? Mm. What has it done for us? What is it? That's her. For, that was her for Cardo. It's very different now. You know, twenty something years later, 25, 25. <laughs> twenty five, twenty five, twenty or so, twenty, 20 or so, years. 10 or so. Um, years later. But it's, um, but it's definitely been like I feel like I'm, I'm, I was. Every year since then, I think I've been like, why did I not just do that? Mm. I could have just done that. Mm. But now I'm in my 40s and I'm doing that now and I feel more comfortable now doing this than what I would have been able to feel 10 years ago even for some reason. I don't know why, why mm. but this year is a good year. <laughs> Camille, you've, you've, been in, you've been studying te reo Māori full time now for almost a month. Um, how are you feeling about it? Uh, how am I feeling about studying? Almost a month. Every day goes really fast and I really enjoy every day. However, I still wonder um, how I'm going to grasp this. I find reassurance like in today, today it could have, for example, I could follow everything um, that, we were being taught, yet I find it hard to verbalise the answers. So, um, but I still feel good. It's a strange thing because mm. um, I still feel like I'm getting it, but then I, sometimes I go home and I'm like, but did I or did I? <laughs> and then I come back the next day and it's like, oh, no, I did. Because then, again, you know, I'm, I'm listening and I'm sitting there and I'm understanding and I'm getting things. I might be missing things here and there, but I'm able to somewhat join the dots. So... For me, I still um, I still feel it's right. I'm still super happy to be coming every day. I still feel fulfilled and exhausted at every, you know, the end of every day. Uh, but I do think I'm somewhat progressing. Is there something that you can identify that stops that those kupu coming out of your mouth? Fakama. I guess. Fuck it, to try and get it wrong. <laughs> mm. I think. 
It must be. It must be my own self, um, yeah, just worried if I got it wrong, if I've got the hair or the KT or the kua in the wrong place, if I've said something totally wrong. It's those joining up the kupu that I find difficult. Um, and then when I'm not in a situation with everybody, I'm not saying all the time, but often I can write out a sentence at home or write a text to somebody without the stress of it all and get it a lot more right than I would in the heat of the moment. Mm. But that's okay. I know that. What I, I it's funny because like they speak about how it's like in your DNA and that, and I just feel like it must be because I'm somewhat getting it. Mm. So I just have to trust in that and keep trying to squash that fucking ma. Fakama is, I guess it's something that comes not just in these learning spaces, but if, like I'm quite an outgoing person and I'm used to talking and filling space. <laughs> and so I don't get fakama to make mistakes because mm. um, I'm like, oh, well, kids, okay, I made a mistake. I'll, you know, I'll learn from that. Or because, and I guess what I'm trying to say is, for me, my personality type, um, there are lots of things I can get fakama about, but speaking is not one of them. And so I find it hard to help people who are fakama mm. because I don't feel the same barrier, mm. and so I don't know how to afina that. And so I wonder, we had a party actually on our Instagram page from someone who said, when you are the kind of person who is, you know, quite shy, quite naturally introverted, um, not saying this is your general personality, but, mm -hmm. you know, quite shy, quite naturally introverted, quite easily, you know, easy to get whakama, mm -hmm. What can you do or what do you do? Have you found anything for you that has helped so far? Um, I think, uh, to be honest, the biggest thing with me, if it is whakamaz, I don't want to be hoha. That's probably the biggest thing. I don't want to be a hoha and, and take up time when someone's, it's a short conversation and we've just taken 20 more minutes to explain it to you. Um, so I guess it's more that. I guess it's, yeah, more hoha than anything, um, but time and giving time. Um, today, who I was sitting next to, um, in particular, another hoa in our akomanga is quite um, gentle and, and giving of time. Um, so that was quite good today. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, time and encouragement and maybe little tips if there's a tip where hair goes and KT goes and mm. just a reminder because I mean yeah yeah because I think that's a lesson that you know I can it's a lesson for lots of people to learn what it's like to be on the mm. side of the person who's whakama but also how we can afina people who are whakama mm. and that giving of time is really important and I think from my experience um, I don't, I, I don't have an issue with anyone who takes longer to say something mm -hmm. or to find those kupu because it's, it's almost like really fulfilling for me when mm -hmm. I hear or see you <laughs> achieve that. Mm -hmm. Like when I hear or see someone go, oh, here or cake there or whatever it is and kind of you can see it click a kupu that I may have already known but can see it click within you it's like oh man that was so fulfilling to watch that mm. and to be a part of that and so I think um, maybe if there was any advice I could give is that <laughs> but um, yeah don't assume or don't feel that you're being a hoha because mm. actually you're not, mm. and people who are um, taking a little bit longer are definitely not. Because at the end of the day, even though some of us may be a little bit faster with kupu now, oh, come next week, you know, you might know half the kupu ho, we might know nothing, and we've got to mm. 
the tables will mm. turn. <laughs> I, yeah, no, totally. And I'm really aware of it in myself and I'm willing to push myself, but, um, yeah. Mm. Mm. It's so funny, I was just remembering um, the second day that we were at uh, Kura. Um, I had a really emotional day that day because I had um, somebody who was in Rumaki uh, on the floor downstairs who was actually one of my... Um, yeah, that's what you do. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> um, and she just spoke to me in te reo really quickly and I and I got really sad mm. um, and really emotional and felt so fucking mad that I burst out into mm. tears because I um, I was it was just it was overwhelming. Yeah. But it's interesting though because in this also that same day, I remember when we were starting to talk about, you know, pronouns and nouns and verbs and da 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 da, -da. And I was sitting there and I was like actually thinking, heck, I actually think I need to learn English first because <laughs> I had no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> oh. I was getting like, it was, I was actually I like, yeah, 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 I know. I was like, oh, and I, that was overwhelming me as well because we were using kupu in English that I hadn't connected with for a, a, a really long time. And so I was feeling really overwhelmed mm. about not, about needing to learn English. Yeah, I find that <laughs> hard like, too. Like that insert verb or something. Here's the verb, here's the proper, here's the pronoun, here's the blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, no, I came to learn Tereo Māori, not to learn English. <laughs> But you know what I find with, um, so we're learning the Te Atarangi method mm. and the Te Atarangi method is that um, silent method of learning and that it's not silent but you don't, you're not given the Pākehā translation of the word, you're given the kupu Māori and then you are given, you know, ngā rerenga kōrero, the sentences. Um, and there is lots of body actions and movement and facial expressions mm -hmm. to teach what that word means or pointing or, you know, whatever. And I've never learnt that method before mm -hmm. and I love it because mm -hmm. I love that what I'm not doing is I'm not going, whare, house. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going, whare, ya te whare. Mm -hmm. And then I'm thinking about whare, what could whare mean and... Mm -hmm. and, and Picturing the fare and drawing the fare and then making you know an image of the fare out of the rods and then asking somebody kehia to fare or you know and that really to me helps to sink in that kupu because I'm not thinking oh fare is house I'm mm. thinking a fare is a fare mm. right. and I think how our tamariki learn to speak whatever language they learn to speak we don't say you know. The whare paku, <laughs> this whare paku actually means toilet. You know, we just go, ko tēnei te whare paku. You know, you just learn by, mm. I don't know, the same way we're learning. <laughs> I can't think of the right kapu. I can't think of the English word anymore. But I've, for me, I have found that an incredible way to retain those new kapu, those kapu ho. I reckon that's where maybe um, when we're always trying to, transfer it back to Te Reo Pākehā or how does this fit, that's where a lot of that trauma comes from, even that world of thinking, mm. because, mm. you know, like you wanted to translate what that um, wahine was saying to you straight away and it just got too much because the way your brain is going is like, you know, what is all of this? Mm. Um, and I think even for me with my trauma, learning not to do that so much, which is one of the... Well, which is the only thing my nan has said to me prior to coming into Takura is just sit and listen, put your pens down, just listen. And then when we go in, that's what our fire, our kaioko is saying to us, like listen with your heart, listen with your ears, listen with your eyes, mm. like try and, you know, they're all tools to listen with. And I think our, our brains are so programmed to think in such a certain way that we can feel like we're letting ourselves down when it comes to feeling whakamā or 
facing that trauma of not being able to respond straight away? No, we're all mama. And we're all um, businesswomen <laughs> in the sense of things. We all run our own timetables normally. What has it been like to transition and uh, have a regular timetable that is the same every day um, while also being mama and having tamariki, you know, to think about, you know, it's not like we're 18 and we can just go off and study and then go party down the pub after kura and, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's a really different space that we're in in our lives undertaking full-time study. What has that been like for you guys? Um, well, the f for me, the first uh, couple of weeks were exhausting. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys were exhausted, mm -hmm. but no. I was... Um, Mm, my tinana heningaro. It's just processing the change was really exhausting. Um, <clears throat> now I think we're getting into a little bit of a routine, but it's um, it's been hard for me to fully let go because it's so funny. In one space, you're really you're like running the show. You know, Why? like you're running the show. You're like, I got this. <laughs> this there, this there, da, 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 da. and then we, I come to Kura and I'm so vulnerable and mm. um, exposed mm. in a kind of exposed. Like everything is like not in check. Mm. <laughs> but it's all good. Like I've learned that that's actually really cool that I'm letting myself be... Um, it's like it's like a we're going through this the grief and the the processing everything that our tupuna have been through mm. um, to get to this point, mm. but it's been um, but it has been exhausting. But um, I do miss picking up my tamariki from Kura, my little earth. But at the same time, I quite like it too. <laughs> <laughs> Is that yeah. okay? Because it's all about it's you. Like, I know. Mm. <laughs> what about you? I mean, for me, well, my I guess you're are pretty crazy yeah. anyway. <laughs> so, if anything, it's brought a bit more of a regular timetable. Um, mm. But I live quite far away, so uh, the distance and travel is, um, you know, I've got to be organised pretty much. Mm. But I'm a, I'm quite an organised person, um, and I'm also really good at overloading myself. Um, so. I don't mean that in a good way. Like, I don't notice that until I am really overloaded. Mm. Um, so I was studying and I was working prior to entering into Takura, and I am supposed to be continuing with more study as of second semester whilst doing Takura, whilst working, which I've already decided that's not going to happen because oh, that's that bringing that other world into my world, which I don't mm. want. Um, although the kaupapa drives me, that can just wait. The time will come when I can carry on with that kaupapa. Mm. But um, I quite like routine. I respond well to routine. Um, yeah, so it's going okay for me. I still have whānau under my care and they're all on this journey with me. Nobody's come under my care without knowing that I'm on this journey. So there will be times when um, my world will be a bit crazy and maybe I'm tired in class and that kind of thing. But for yeah. now, it's good. Mm. Yeah, for now, it's good. I was really scared about the routine because I haven't done routine in 10 years mm. or more. And I was also really scared, um, as you say, Tiffany, about that kind of vulnerability of, in your, you know, in our lives last year, <laughs> ite ratau, <laughs> We were the boss. <laughs> I mean, for you, Camille, the babies are the boss, mm -hmm. but same. <laughs> but, you know, we're the boss. Tino um, matato with what we do, you know, with the, the mahi that we do, really understand it and know it well and can do it off, you know, with our eyes closed and all of that kind of stuff. And then come to Kura and be like, um almost starting at the bottom again mm. and not knowing not knowing what you're doing, not knowing, like being really vulnerable with what you can and can't do and, and 
Um, just that <laughs> you have to be here by this time where you're going to have to sing a way yeah, to right. your class. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, just just all of that was really scary. But being a month deep now, it's, it's not so bad. Mm. And having a routine for me has been so good for my taha wairua, mm. taha hinengaro. It's, a, it's been like a forced rest, mm. I suppose. Because mm. like you, I overload myself mm. in all the worst of ways. Mm. And so to only have, you know, one or two things on the go is very rare. And to have that at the moment, it's like, oh, what do you do? What do normal people do at six o'clock? <laughs> like, um, hang on. What do you normally do on the weekends? Because I'm normally at mahi mm. or doing mahi. And so now I've kind of flipped it to spending time with my whanau and then realising how Māori, how how much of whakaaro Māori that is mm. to feed your wairua. Ne, mm. like, um, and something that I thought, oh, you know, I came into Takiura going, well, you know, I already have whakaaro Māori. I live in a papakainga. My whole life is whakaaro Māori. I can see my whare nui from my house. And then I go, oh, hang on. Whakaaro Māori is also uh, that whare tapa whā. <laughs> and if your taha whānau is not looked after, if your whānau, if you're not feeding your whānau and your whānau are not feeding you, whether that be kai or whether that be, you know, other things, <laughs> um, then really that's not thinking... That's not really for card or Māori, eh? So that's been interesting. That's been an interesting shift for me. Um, <clears throat> one of the things, now that I think about my whānau, one of the things that I have done is um, taken over my whare <laughs> with study techniques. And... Um, <laughs> yeah, I saw that too. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I need to get some of those pens. Yes, whānau ma. Right, right. Those, um, those chalk, chalk pens yeah. are awesome. Mm. Mm. And so I was trying to think of other ways that I could um, bring te reo Māori into the whare that we could all learn as a whānau. Because my husband's Tongan, so I'm like forcing him to learn te reo Māori so I have someone to speak to. Although, given that he speaks Tongan fluently, te reo Māori is like... It's easy for him easy. to pick it up. Um, so on one of my mirrors in the bathroom, I have all the kupu for uh, your body parts from your pokohiwi up. Mm. But I don't say where they are. So the idea is that you look in the mirror and then you're like, oh, ko enei o kukaru, you know. Um. Um, ko tēnei tō ihu or whatever it is. But you kind of see the kupu and then it's almost challenging yourself to point out where they are on your body. And then on the shower door, <laughs> on the shower door, I've done the kupu oh, for your tinana. tinana. And so, um, you know, u, yeah. um, uh, uma, uma. <laughs> uh, mati wai, mm. mati mati, mati hao. You know, those kupu that, that maybe I didn't learn when I was younger. So, you, you know, you learn the u, poko, poko, hiwi, poko, mm. hope, wai, wai, but it's like, and then what? <laughs> so, <laughs> turi, mm. tuke, um, mm. and then I've put on there, you know, ure. Mm. Tene tene or tara, mm. because also I want to teach my kōtiro. So mm. when we're in the shower, it's on the other. It's not on the wet side of the door. It's on the other <laughs> side of the door. Um, and so that's one way that I have put those in our fare to for us all to continue to kōtiro. And then the other thing was it encourages us when we're in the bathroom to speak to each other or to our kōtiro mm. using those kupu. Mm. So then she'll be in the kōtiro. I'm like horoyato. Uh, why, why? Why, why? Or, Ooh. you know. Why? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Oh. And so it's kind of, um, that's one way, that's one tip. Have you guys got any other study tips that you have started to incorporate in your whare? Or, or just study tips anywhere? I have just gone and bought a whole lot of post-its. Thanks, Kiani. <laughs> no, I, I no, still have. Still going to use them. I still have another thing that I've done with post-its, which, oh, I, yeah. which I can share. But we'll, we'll let's listen to so your thing first. What I did do is I was cheap and I bought the cheaper ones. Yeah. And they didn't stick. So then oh. I bought the actual post-its or whatever they're called, the sticky <laughs> ones. Yeah. 
And then um, I've got chalk pens, so I right. do that. So that's good to hear how you've broken it up into different sections. Because mm. that's me. I'm going to do that. Um, yeah. So other than that, I'm using Quizlet, where other students have put up their little study lists and matching them up with the words to learn the kupu um, and trying to talk more with my pōtiki um, you know I don't know like you know like little little things that, like in the morning with getting ready trying to use that a lot more um, that's about as far as it goes for me at the moment can you just tell me about Quizlet <clears throat> Is it so you just go online, Google Quizlet? Do you have to set up an account or anything? So I just downloaded the app on my phone. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's free. I think there's a bit better one that you can pay for, but I've just got the free one. And then I just typed in Takuda to see what already might be there from students. And it's all there. Yeah. <laughs> so our weekly kupu that we... Um, learn is there and then you can um, choose to either like play a matchy game with the kupu maori with the te reo pakia mm. matching it up or it comes up with the kupu maori and then you write in what the meaning is in te reo pakia there's different ways to or you can make up your own lists and share that with everybody yeah, it's cool quite good yeah what about you tiffany uh, I've just been uh, really challenging myself to kōrero with um, everyone in the mm -hmm. whare, mm -hmm. even if they um, um, kōrero te reo pākea back to me, which my kids seem to always have done, even though they <laughs> learn, they actually know more reo than what I do, <laughs> but they... Um, and I, it's quite funny because sometimes I'll say something and I might, you know, I remember once I said, Mawa. And my, my Takutama was like, What did you say, Mum? <laughs> you know, <it's> like, <laughs> but I had to actually also sit them down and just say, Let's uffy each other. I, I mm. want to totoko you and I really want you to totoko, you know, your mama because this is a really big step mm. that, that, we're all taking together, but I do try and kōrero as much, and I just, um, I try not to write too much. I'm trying, mm. I reread every night. I go through our karakia and our kupu for the day. Um, and, but I just try and kōrero, because I know I need to start here in the whare because I'm so shy mm. out in the, the big wide world. Mm. I actually saw um, Ruby. Oh, Ru Ruby, Ruby. Ruby. <laughs> 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 um, it's, um, I saw her out yesterday, and she saw she saw me, and instantly when I saw her, I was like, oh, because I knew, and she asked me a question in Te and I just went, <gasps> and I, and I. Because I have this, I don't know yeah. what happens to me, but I get like I go into shock. Mm. I can and relate to that. I, That's um, that having the time. I just I and I want to, um, and I was like trying to gather my, you know, my answer, and then I could tell she, and I don't. I think she might have felt uncomfortable that she might have maybe made me feel uncomfortable, and then she was like, "Oh, how was your weekend?" And I was like, "Oh, it's getting there. I was just <sighs> sorry." <laughs> You know, it was just really, sorry, not sorry, but mm. it was, yeah, so I'm just trying, sorry, I trail off. I but start talking about off. something and then I end up talking <laughs> about something else, but <laughs> I do try and just, I do all my karakias mm. and go through all the kupu and kōrero as much as I can mm. in the whare first. I, I agree, and, I try and um, kōrero with my partner as well and... Um, if I have to send a text to somebody, especially someone I know who's also in Takuda, I I send it in Te Reo Māori. Oh, oh. And then I send that face emoji afterwards. <laughs> and that 
<laughs> fingers crossed and the hand over the face <laughs> hoping that it's right. Um, but it's been quite good. It's been really um, reassuring when I've gotten the answer that I was after. Mm. Mm. One, I wanted a phone number of the person to connect within a certain company in regards to such and such, and they sent me that. They sent a screenshot of the person that I needed to contact, cool. which was awesome. Oh, that um, yeah, and then on the way to Kura, I always try to play Waiata and, yeah, just go handy and I do that too, and yeah. It's a nice way to set the day mm. as well. Yeah. Um, there's, you know, not everyone can go to Rumakiri or not everyone can, can or wants to through total immersion and actually one thing that um, Stacey reminded me that's really important is that you don't have to do a total immersion course to learn te reo Māori mm. and so while we those of us having a kōrero here um, are all currently enrolled in Rumaki Reo that doesn't mean that you can't uh, learn te reo Māori in so many other ways and um, you just reminded me of that when you said uh, how you talk how you text your your hoa um, in Te Reo Māori. My cousin and I last year, uh, we weren't going to any course. We weren't doing any um, formal study of Te Reo Māori. We bought the um, Māori made easy puka puka mm -hmm. and we decided that she'd have one, I'd have one. Um, we lived next door to each other at the time, my cousin, my kaihana, and we would go through it together because it's half an hour a day near. So we would do... <laughs> Half an hour, we did it for, we didn't do it all the time, but, you know, we'd get mm -hmm. together and we'd, like, sit there, go through one um, whārangi, one page, and then we'd, you know, the next day try and do the same. But we made each other, um, like, a, we, we had set a wero for each other, a challenge for each other, that if we wanted to speak to each other via text or message, messenger, we had to tuhia i te reo Māori. And if we wanted to speak Pākehā, we had to call. And because most of the time we just message because it's faster. Mm. And I call, my cousin doesn't, well, she's not really into <laughs> making phone calls or she doesn't have to. So it was a really good challenge for us mm. because neither of us um, had the time to have these long-winded phone calls. And so we're like, okay, we just have to do it. And so we'd text each other in Te Reo Māori, but then we'd start to get a bit clever and throw in a kupu that the other person didn't know, and then they'd take ages to reply because then you'd know that they'd be in the Te Aka app dictionary or in the actual dictionary <laughs> trying to find the meaning of the kupu. But that was a really cool way for us, um, you know, not studying, not going to Kurupo, not doing any of that kind of stuff, but just in our own time yeah. and our own wero to each other, um, another kind of way. For some people... Um, you know, like via text where you're not in front of somebody mm. and at the moment having to respond straight away, it gives you that time to respond or whatever, so it can feel less vulnerable, mm. I guess. Yeah. Um, I put the part I out to our Instagram page. Um, what do you want us to discuss in these podcasts or what do you want us to discuss in the first one? And there were a whole lot of responses that came in. One of them was um so it was self-talk what's going on in your head while you're learning so that's from somebody to us what's going on in your head while you're learning there's so much going on in my head <laughs> Same. Mm. um quite often i do think that this is mine. This is mine anyway. It's okay mm. for me to feel. I have to remind myself that it's okay to feel whakama, awanga, wanga, you know, all of... It's, it's okay to feel anything, but this is mine and it's okay. That's what I do often say to myself, that it's, it's already there. Mm. But it's mm. mine. Like it's not. It's when we're not. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't think I need to elaborate any more on it. But it's like this is ours, mm. and this is, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I do say that this is mine. This is mine. It's okay. It's not mm. uncharted territory for you. You know, mm. don't worry about that. 
This mm. is yours. Take it. Mm. That's what I do say to myself every single day when I'm in my class and something, if I have a little bit of a, I'm just like, hakina, haputa. <laughs> like, take it. It's okay. Mm. You've mm. got it. Mm. Just remind me. I agree. Um, I often want to punch myself. I feel really blessed to be in the seat in Takuda, being able to be in full immersion. Um, as much as I have to remind myself that same thing, Tiffany. Um, and then I'm daily blown away by um, the wairua behind our kupu and how beautiful our oh, is. Yes. And that's when I get emotional and then I want to have little cries here and there. Cause I'm like, mm. oh my gosh, we just have the coolest real. Like, it's just so beautiful and it's so much more than the minimal meanings we've been given and fed, mm. you know, and um, which makes me angry too because, you know, so much has been... I don't know, redirected to us in such a minimalistic way when there's mm. just so much more beauty to our, our real and and that blows my mind daily. Mm. It was that fear of the beauty, <sighs> wasn't it? That's yeah. why it's taken away. It's just too atahua to even so comprehend. Atahua. We can't even put it into kupu. How clever. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So that's something I hear mm. on a daily in my head. Mm. Oh man, I total all that so much when you think of the the actual meaning behind some of our kupu. It's not just this means this, you know. It's this means all of these things over here and this feeling and this experience and this history and this da 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 da, da And that's what this one kupu means. Mm-hmm. Chow da. Like, <laughs> and it's like, hmm, okay. And you think how incredibly powerful and intelligent our tūpuna were and I can I guess that's what you're saying eh Tiffany that that can be quite confronting for (laughs) colonisers to go these people are so intelligent we must take away the ariel so that we ensure that they don't show us up because when you think of the meaning behind some of our kipu my goodness Um, for me what goes on in my head uh, when we're in class um, I guess a couple of things. One is I'm always like, okay, how do I remember this? How do I remember this? How do I remember this? Oh, <laughs> and it's just like, okay, this is the kupu, but how do I remember it? How do I remember it? And because I'm too busy going, how do I remember it? I'm not remembering it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's one thing that often is in my head. Like when a new kupu comes out, I'm like, okay, how am I going to remember that that means that? Mm. Um, <clears throat> and then I think, okay, how can I put in a sentence? And how can I put it in a different sentence? And how can I use it and now now try another sentence? The other thing I think, though, when I'm thinking about how do I try and remember it, how do I try and remember it, is when would I use this at home and mm. how would I say it at home? So one of the kupu I learned was te oro, scream. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, te oro, how am I going to remember te oro? And then I think, oh, God, my kōtero screams all the time. Kaua e te oro. Hayata te kapua, kaua e te oro. And so then I think, okay, that's that's the phrase that I, that I will remember because it's the phrase I know I'm going to use when I get home. And then I get home and, yep, <laughs> my daughter walks in the door and she's screaming about something. I'm like, hayata te kapua, kaua e te oro. And then she looks at me and she's like, Hiaha te te oro, mama. And then I have to teach her the meaning of te oro and then that helps to retain it. But that's honestly what goes through my head. How am I going to remember this? And so I kind of, yeah, I've started starting to train myself to think in order for me to remember it, how, do I norm- how would I use it in a normal everyday setting? Mm. And then the other thing I think of is, do I need to remember this kapu right now? Because we get lots of kupu, you know, there are so many kupu you have to remember, or not that you have to, but <clears throat> there are so many kupu that we all want to learn and we all want to remember. Um, and it's, well, I don't know that it's physically impossible to <laughs> learn all of these things at once, but I sometimes think, okay, which ones can I just let go of for now mm. um, and maybe come back to later mm. 
when when they're appropriate for that time in my life or when I have a situation where I'm like, okay, now I need to learn those okay. kupu for this situation. Except when you hear one that, you know, like, paoro oro. Mm. I was like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> I want to use that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, Every now and then there's one that's just like, oh, I like the ring of that. What are you hoping to get out of this? Because this is our first kōrero together. And there will be other wahine who will join us on this podcast uh, as the year goes on. But we will come back, uh, kia kōrua, <laughs> and um, have more kōrero around where we're at in another point in time. Um, my part I yeah, is, is what, what are you hoping to get from this journey of real reclamation? Other than being able to kōrero Māori. Because that's a given. But what are you hoping? Well, maybe it's not a given, but it's a given amongst us because you don't have a choice. It's going to happen. <laughs> um, but what are, you, what are you hoping for at the other end of this i tēnei tau? Because this is not the end of the journey. It's just oh. the end of this year. Mm. For me, one of uh, my main goals... Uh, like you say, first of all, it's just the beginning of a lifelong journey, but one of my main goals is my nan that raised me is 87. Um, she's just moved back into her birth home in the far north, um, and that's where she'll be now. Um, so before she leaves this hour, I want to be able to sit down and call it all Māori with her. Hea tāhua. Mm. Although... <laughs> She's quite funny about it because she says, well, you better sign me up to Takiura as well then because I don't know if I'll be able to understand. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that would be um, so fulfilling for me personally and I would like her to see and to hear the effort made before she leaves the cell. Mm. I would actually love to do the same with my nana who raised me too. Um, she's 81 now. She has um, her. She has dementia now, though, and it's quite interesting because whenever we've visited her, um, she's speaking more real. Mm. I remember, like a nurse came in and she was like, "Hi, <laughs> 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 And we haven't actually. She didn't speak like that to us. There was a period of, you know. Where everything was in Pakia, but she's speaking more real. But I would love to, call, but she loves hearing te reo. Mm. Every time she hears her, she's just like, she would always sit back and she's like, I love te reo Māori. You know, she's just like, mm. oh, it's so beautiful to hear te reo Māori. Mm. I'd love to call it all with my uncle, my auntie, uh, my other auntie who raised me, her uh, tāne. Um, he was. Um, like a staple of te ao Māori within our lives. I agree. I'd like to um, also, I'd like to, like I said, I receive a lot of emails and I have whānau that are fluent speakers and then I'd love to uphold the mana of their space within birthing and all of that, whether, you know, that's being able to have a whole birth in te reo Māori would be beautiful. Mm. I'd like to soak through and marinate the halls that we, um, you know, through the hospitals and through the birthing centres with that kind of thing. <laughs> Lis listening to you both talking about your kuia um, makes me very moke moke for my kuia in Karawa. And uh, I said this in the in the bonus episode I recorded with Stacey, so whanau ma, if you haven't heard... Uh, that episode, go to either Spotify or Apple Podcasts and it's the bonus episode that comes after Nuku, I think she's 63, but it's around those early 60s and there'll be a podcast in there. It's not on our website, it's only on the on the podcast channels um, where we talk about my journey with Te Reo Māori. And I just reflect on that kōrero where one of the things I said in that podcast was, um, you know, when I die... I would love, because, you know, both my kui and karawa have passed on, um, I would love to see my 
my papa, who raised me, um, and be able to call it all with him, te reo Māori. And I think of the richness of our reo and how you can only, you know, some feelings you can only express i te reo Māori. You know what I love is that throughout this podcast, we've all just dropped in kupu Māori, reanga Māori, you know, reanga kōrero, and it doesn't actually matter whether it was the right way or not mm. <laughs> because it just becomes normal to do that mm. in the day-to-day. And I hope, yeah. I do really hope that this podcast series encourages you who are listening that you're not afraid to just use the words you have as much as you can. Mm. Mm. They'll eventually come out correct one day, mm. but just keep trying and using them and shuffling them around. Get get your tongue used to them. Mm. 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 Wow, come to. We'll check in again in a couple of months' time, Fano. Uh, thank you both for being part of the first uh, podcast called <laughs> for Thorkudio. Before I go, I just have to give a mihi to Counties Manukau DHB and the Hauora Māori Workforce Development Fund. Because I wouldn't be able to do Takiura this year without their afina, without their totoko. Um, I'm not employed by a health provider. I don't work in health as such in terms of paid employment. But since I was 18, I have worked for my hapori, for my community, for my marae, uh, in and around Hauwara initiatives. Uh, bringing screening programs to my marae and consistently working in that space. This particular um, fund has enabled me to study this year as it has covered my fees and I am incredibly grateful for that. I'm also incredibly grateful that there are opportunities like this for people to access and I am very privileged that I have been able to access it and I know that I will be able to, with my reo Māori and my communications mahi that I do through my business, continue to support hauora for our whānau, our hapu, our iwi, our hapuri moving forward. And that is the way that I'm extremely committed in giving back um, to ensure that by using te reo Māori, uh, I am able to reach into our communities um, and support our hauora in those ways. So just a huge mahi to them. Um, tēnā koutou, thank you so much. Appreciate it and we'll make sure that I do you all proud um, <laughs> and uh, finish this year making that putia very much worthwhile. So kia ora. <laughs>